I'll take the screen sharing. Like this. Uh, would you please comment if the size and the placement is good? Uh, size is better now. All right. Okay. Good morning. It's quite nice weather here in Helsinki. Uh, yesterday we covered branching and merging, conflict res resolution. Uh, we a little bit started and scratched sharing repositories online, and also learned about the inspecting uh, history with Git. And today we are going to start working collaboratively. Uh, that is uh, out of your local computer only, but with uh, other people, maybe familiar people or, or people you don't uh, know. We have uh, working models for both situations. We will start with a little bit of a concepts first. I will go through that. Uh, it's uh, about 20 minutes after that summary. We'll uh, discuss about centralized workflow. That's kind of the first thing to use, perhaps when collaborating with the people you know. We have a break there. After the break, we'll become a a lengthy breakout room exercise and after that I will discuss about distributed, distributed uh, and forking workflow. We will have break uh, middle there before uh, another perhaps 30 minute exercise in the breakout rooms and uh, then I will conclude the day with a short look into how to contribute other people's project and uh, in the end we have a short summary and good and we can answer questions if, if uh, some uh, specific questions arise from hack for, from hackmd uh, small um, I have a small thing to ask from, uh, or to remind uh, exercise leaders. Uh, during the this morning before this uh, distributed version control and forking workflow, uh, we will have an uh, in the exercise. Uh, it's required that exercise leaders create an uh, exercise repository for their group. Probably some of you might have already done this, but I'll paste anyway the link to the exact point in the instructions. It's a couple of minutes of, of uh, task, but it's good to have already done when the exercise begins. So if you have a slack time here during this uh, morning, you could perhaps go into GitHub and click uh, generating the uh, repository from the template. Um, I'm not sure if I'm able to share it now in the chat. It's a bit clumsy. Uh, all right, here it comes. Now it's on the chat, Zoom chat. All right. Okay, any comments from the other instructions, exercise leaders, or anyone at this point? If not, let's begin then.
Okay. Uh, we saw yesterday. And then, in, as a bonus, kind of you get get the backup for your project project code. Actually, you get the multiple backups if uh, people sharing the same repository are working, uh, having their computers at uh, different physical locations. Um, and today we we. We are going to look how we are actually going to do it, and there's uh, two working models how we are going to do do the collaboration. And uh, yeah, the first one is more simple, more simple one. You clone the repository, so you get the repository local machine, make changes there locally, and you push the changes back to, to the remote repository. Uh, in this uh, distributed workflow, it involves forks and allows uh, a code review and pull requests. So let's have a look what those mean. But first, a little recap about the concepts and terms used here. So, <coughs> repository is, is the actual project. Usually it's a directory containing all the code and also and data that your project uh, has and when it's version controlled it also contains all the commit branches and tags so the commit uh, here is a snapshot of the project with the uni unique identifier as we probably have already understood. Uh, just a minute, I will take here uh, some pointer so I can highlight things to that. Okay. A branch here is an independent development line. Uh, you want perhaps work on different features or different people want to work on different fe features simultaneously. You want to test something quickly and uh, then you notice that okay it didn't work out. You want to just throw it away. That's what branches are for and they are very cheap in it. You can you should always do a branch because they virtually they cost nothing. Uh, tag is a pointer to single commit to make it easier to refer it afterwards. Kind of sticky notes. Cloning <coughs> uh, means that uh, you download the whole repository with its branches and tags and everything to your local computer. And forking means taking a full copy of the repository. And this copy will stay in GitHub, in the web service, in the server, in the uh, web. 
and you can make changes uh, this uh, your copy of the full repository and we will see how we get these changes uh, transferred here um, then there is two more ways to create copies of repositories in this uh, uh, web services like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and so on. Well, actually, at least in GitHub, but probably similar um, models, methods might be found for these other services as well. So, repository can be marked as a template, and new repositories can be generated from this. At Code Refinery, we will we will, we use this model to, for example, create our um, these workshop pages. We have a template for this um, standard workshop page, and then we generate copies of it. And this newly created or generated copy, it won't contain any history. It just contains initial one commit. That is the current status of the, of the repositories. And it, it will not inherit the history of the original repository. Uh, another second optional way to copy a full repository is to import it. Uh, you can import uh, another git repository from another service, uh, another hosting service or web address. And this will preserve the history of the project. All right. Uh, as, a, as a discussion and example, you can, uh, while you have time, you can uh, browse, for example, GitHub and projects that you are familiar or interested in, and try to find how many forks there exist and where they actually are, meaning that uh, what is the organization that has forked them or individual. Yeah. And then uh, some clarification to terminology here. When we uh, download changes or upload changes, we in Git, we use terms pull or fetch when we want to get updated multiple repositories. And when we uh, upload, we say that we push the changes to remote repositories. And uh, yeah, there are good explanation or clarifications that uh, when branches are pulled from remote repositories locally, they are marked uh, with the remote's name. So usually uh, the remote is named uh, as an origin, especially if we have only one remote. So when we Check the what branches we are having in our local machines. The remote ones are shown like this: origin slash master or main. Okay. Any 
questions in HackMD that I should address or other comments. It's all good up to now. All right. So let's move on. That was about the concepts. Um, actually, yes. Next is uh, the centralized workflow. Uh, Sabri, are you ready? Yes, uh, you're, I'm going to take your speed. All right, go ahead. Thanks. In the meanwhile, there is uh, one question that came up. So maybe you can spend some time on explaining what exactly a remote is. Uh, very good question. Uh, I will open this image again, describing. So, um, remote is any uh, any computer other than your own computer sitting on your desk. Which, and, and this and another computer uh, must have it installed in it and then it can uh, host repositories anyone can fail if they are more agile with their verdicts but yes uh, usually, we use these famous web services like GitHub and GitLab, and they have uh, lots of servers in their data centers where where you can connect and and send your copy of your repository, and and that is a remote. features built to their use web user interface mm, that you locally usually don't have. Thanks, you know, I think that's that's very okay. insightful. Good. Okay, thank you all. Uh, and good morning again. Uh, I'm Sabri. Uh, I work as a senior engineer uh, at University of Oslo and a member of the Quality Funder team. <clears throat> Uh, so my job would be um, to describe one of those scenarios uh, you have uh, explained very well um, and learn some concepts and techniques around an exercise. So this um, lesson is um, built around an exercise itself. So I will, uh, what I'm planning to do is um, explain the concepts behind a little bit, and then explain the exercise. Um, and then at the end of the exercise, we could discuss together um, more details, right? So this will be third, uh, I would imagine is this as like a, a three part lesson. First we have some uh, explanations, and then we do, a, do something, and then we discuss again. Um, so Git naturally is a distributed version control system. It is not a um, like um, dependent on a central server. Like if you know SVN, for example, you have to install some uh, central server and all your um, clients you can call them, like everybody should connect to that. That is a central place. So on Git, we don't have a central place. Uh, so when we work on centralized workflows, we define a role, like we make one of our distributed members, you know, one of, one of the nodes as a central place. So there's no technical difference uh, between like a, a central, um, Git repository and other Git repository. 
So this center gate repository could be on the cloud, like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, uh, Nordic, um, um, the, uh, our hosting uh, GitLab service. Uh, it, this could be a server, in fact, in the, like if you are working on an office or uh, um, um, like a, a, in, on, your, in your workplace. This could be one, one computer that's hosting it. Um, if you want to uh, um, go further, like this could be a folder in, a, in another place on your computer. So there's, um, there could be multiple um, instances that uh, this could, uh, uh, this could be um, uh, designed. Um, so, yes. So this is just a designated role, not a technical um, um, assignment. Uh, one thing to work under this model is that you have these blue people, the, the contributors who work. And then you have the red designated central Git repository. You would see that there are arrows with the arrowheads pointing uh, both ways. This means everybody who's contributing should have read and write access to the repository. Uh, this means uh, you are working in a trusted circle. So these are sort of, uh, a set of developers um, uh, who know each other. Um, in this way, you could allow people to directly contribute uh, to the project um, and um, discuss in, 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 in one, one place. The, the disadvantage is if you want to open up this to the, the world, like uh, the um, people who don't trust, this could become complicated and we should not do that. Um, code refinery, for example. So we have our code refinery, um, the, the central GitHub um, repository and the project, where all members have read and write access. So we, we, we consider ourselves like a, a trusted circle there. Um, then um, when, you, when you do, when you have a design uh, as such, uh, we know something about the branches now. It is very important that keep our main branch or the, or the master branch in the right protected way. Like nobody directly change anything to that. There, there's, there's, uh, there's a right protection there. Uh, you know, we could uh, go through uh, merge requests uh, to get things into the master as we see, as we will see in a moment. Um, then a little bit about um, the exercise. Um, so this exercise is uh, you have to uh, do it in your group, uh, in, in your breakout room. Um, the important part is the exercise leaders or, or one designated person in your group uh, take this central role, right? And others follow. So um, this part I'm going to explain, you know, the first part of the exercise. Create a, a repository using a template. So this part should be done only by one person. Right? Otherwise we cannot demonstrate this uh, centralized nature, centralized um, uh, the setup. In order to do that, one person in the group, right? Uh, probably it will be the exercise leader. Go to this template workshop that we have created. You open it. And you land on a page like this. Code refinery template, centralized workshop, uh, centralized uh, workflow exercise. And you will have readme. And they will have uh, two branches there. When you arrive at this page, uh, one person in your group 
would go and click use this as a template. So if you are um, doing, doing it as a group, you could, uh, one person could actually share the screen and uh, show this, um, how it is done. Then we create, use this as a template. Then you arrive at this page, they get some uh, um, chance to uh, um, add some details. Here you could add a name for your repository and it doesn't have to be the same name even, but I'm going to um, you use the um, same name. Uh, so I could, I could uh, try to it uh, easily. Workflow two, for example, right? Uh, you could have a short description, it's not a must, but it's, it's always good to have some description uh, in your project. Um, for the exercise, exercise. Um, make it, make sure that you don't make it private. So you're going to share it, make it public. And then you will see this uh, include all branches. So we don't want all the branches. Don't select that. Then we'll create the template, uh, repository from the template. It will take um, less than a minute, and you will land on this page, and and if and you and you will see that it's under my name now, not the not the code refinery, uh, uh, the template. So when you arrive here, next thing to do is invite your collaborators. So this is where the rest of the group involves. Uh, and please uh, keep in mind, once you've done this, you would not, um, so later on, I, I will emphasize that uh, more, uh, but if I just in case forget. Uh, yes, for example, here, we, will, we would mention a link with, uh, with the name called refinery, for example, here. So this is this will not work if you copy paste. So you have to make sure that you use the correct repository. So you you um, come here, and then what you know what you need to do is to invite your members. In order to do that, so you will see a uh, uh, settings here. But you know because I'm I'm I'm, uh, minim I'm I have minimized my screen. I'll I have to go through this uh, these three dots here to get more settings. Uh, if you are watching on uh, full, uh, if you if you open it on full screen, it'll the settings will be right there. You go to settings, then on this uh, menu menu, you will find something called manage access. So this is where we set up access. Click that, then it'll ask uh, for uh, for you to log in. Type your password and you come here. So at the moment, there are no collaborators. There are no nobody here. Then what you should do is you should invite collaborators. Click that button. And I'm going to invite uh, my clone. Right now, I, I created an I have another git account just to demonstrate this. And then uh, and uh, when you um, when you do this, the way to find out the username. So here I, I typed uh, a username. The way to find out the username of your uh, um, group is to share it on the Zoom chat in your breakout room. Right? Don't type it on the uh, HackMD. So that's uh, it, the the best way to do is share it on the breakout room chat. So that breakout room chat you will only see the breakout room people. So um, there you uh, type the type your username, GitHub username. Uh, and I could also recommend not to search by full name, for example. There are so many people with the same name. Make sure you use the username instead. Type the username. Uh, so, the, so the way to collect the usernames are on the Zoom chat. Uh, after you reach um, your breakout room. I will uh, add in. So when you do this add part, you will see a pending invitation. 
this pending invitation means that person has not clicked on a link that has been sent to the email. We have seen um, many times this invitation link lands on the spam folder. So um, you have to check that as well. So until that person, uh, so the person who invite here, the subject to goes and accept that, that person can't collaborate. So if there is a person later on, we will see that how to send um, changes to the repository, the changes will be rejected because that that uh, that process has not been completed yet. Uh, so here, that person has not uh, accepted yet. And also the, um, um, the collaborator, the, 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 um, the, the host of the central repository, you know, the exercise leader probably would have this watch here. Um, this means like any changes to this repository is received via email um, to the person hosting this. So you could also unwatch this, right? Ignore or custom. So I would uh, I would recommend that you know during the during the workshop like during the exercise. Make sure it's, it's, it's on under watch, so you'll get all the warnings and messages as such. Uh, even if you're watching a, like a public repository, there are a lot of things that you could learn from just watching things. Uh, how people uh, you know, contribute, uh, you could get messages. So what I have uh, as my um, setup is, you know, I can't open my Gmail here, I don't know which emails have arrived in the morning, so that I can show you. I have created a filter uh, in my uh, email, so all these watch uh, emails go to one place. Um, so uh, if there are a lot, if there's a lot of noise, I can filter it. So it's watching is a, is a good thing, but if, we, if it becomes too annoying, like if I, if I contribute to the Unix kernel, for example, and you don't want to watch it anymore, then it's okay to turn off. But during the exercise, please make sure that it's turned on. Uh, let me see my other self. I'm going to open it in another browser uh, so I can. Uh, Show it. If I remember my uh, other account password. So just in case, if I type my GitHub password, try not to watch. Okay. GitHub.com. Okay, I'm here. Uh, so I'm actually looking at as the other person. Uh, so here, this is where the um, the other person would be. So let's say if you, if you can't find that link, that invitation did not arrive. So the, so what one thing you could do is, you could go here and you'll see this copy invitation. Click that. And when you click that, uh, that invitation will be uh, copied to your uh, clipboard, you know, the memory, and then share that on the chat. And that person, the other, uh, the, your group members, could first log into their GitHub and paste the link that you got on the chat. Then they will really uh, um, arrive at this place and then you can click accept invitation. Then that is the, that is the completion of that workflow. Just by adding the username, they don't get access. So make sure that you go through this process. Uh, I hope that is clear. So if that is uh, not clear, the please uh, ask in the HackMD, then I could uh, explain more uh, what was not clear. Um, so this is for the exercise leader, really the, the main part for, the, for this to be done. Uh, and more details about um, how to do this, you know, recommended practice, how do you share the username, for example, is given here on the text. What I said is already uh, provided to you. Um, so the description of the exercise, um, I will I will describe a little bit more uh, the some concepts uh, about this exercise uh, as we discuss a little bit. The helpers, you know, we call them exercise leaders now. Uh, prepare prepare the workshop. Uh, prepare the prepare the central repository to be contributed, and make sure that you go up to step eight of this exercise that will come. So if you see, this is the first step, go to the step eight, up to the eight, and then come back to the main room and we can ask the questions. And uh, 
do step 9 and 10 um so the second part of the exercise after you have um, created the central repository from the template and you added your collaborators and after people have accepted your invitation people could clone the uh, repository to your uh, to their laptop um so i'm going to clone it here myself um, Sadri, please tell us when it's a good time to open the breakout rooms and how you envision we are going to have the break while we are doing the exercise. That would be very helpful. Yes, thank you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, um, tell you what's going to happen very, very quickly. Well, not very quickly. I mean, like uh, in a short way, the, what expected. Then we'll uh, have a break. Right? I'll announce the break. Now, after that break, you come back here to the main room. Then I will briefly explain again the exercise, just in case you forget. Then you go to the breakout room. So the breakout room would not uh, start at least for another 10 minutes. Right? OK. Uh, make sure when you are here that you don't do this on, uh, on, 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 on one of your old repositories, uh, something that you did yesterday. Um, make sure that. Uh, you know, some somewhere that this is somewhere that you can find out. You know, I'm going to do it on a, uh, on my home directory, right? Uh, let's make it a little bit smaller so I can show what I'm typing better. Uh, sorry if I may interrupt, Sabri. There is some confusion about uh, which exercise to do in the. Uh, breakout room. Uh, Radovan, would you like to add something? Yes, so we created a little bit of confusion because on Zoom chat we shared instructions for a later exercise. And also answering another question, how it can be. So in this exercise, we will, one person will create a repository from the template. The one person is typically the exercise lead. And Everybody else will provide their GitHub username, get edit as a collaborator. So everybody else will clone, but only one person will create the repository. But in this exercise, we will add collaborators. Um, we, have, we have shared instructions for a later exercise where we'll try to do something different. I hope that removed confusion and didn't add confusion. Thanks. Yes. Um, so I was uh, I was saying that uh, the mm, so after the after the after the excess leader uh, created a central repository and then uh, invited the the members. The members should make a copy on their on their um, laptop. So um, when you do that, make sure that I'm, I'm going to tell you very, very, very uh, only the important parts. The, this one, the, 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 the so uh, this is not for you to follow, right? So this is uh, for you to watch. Um, uh, so you can, you can do this in the breakout room. So I will do the Git status. So make sure that you do the git status uh, before you um, clone it, um, so that you will not clone it to, to somewhere that already is uh, git git controlled to remove reduce confusion, and then don't copy paste this directly. That will not work. Go here, go to your uh, the central repository created before your group inside your breakout room. Uh, go to the central uh, repository. After you, you know, um, the, um, the after you accept the invitation, of course, then code and then copy that link. I think uh, you have everybody has set up SSH keys. Otherwise, you have to go to the 
uh, HTTP S. Then what we do is git clone that repository. You, you see that this is not that code refinery uh, link that's in the page. So this is something generated in your breakout room and only will be available after the access leader do that. I'm not going to give another name. I could of course uh, give another name um, here for the repository. If you don't give a name at the end, like a something central, if you don't give a name, it will be the default name of that repository. Um, it's asking for my key. Um, then it will be uh, cloned. Then you have your um, central repository and that readme that you had, if I do the readme, centralized workspace, uh, centralized workspace, uh, workshops, uh, 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 exercise readme. So this is the same read, readme that you will see here. So you'll get that. Um, so um, for the um, for for the next five minutes, I'm going to uh, explain a little bit about this workflow. What's um, what has happened? Because there was a question about the remote asset, which uh, you very well explained. So I'm going to my uh, the magic thing. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah. So it, this is the same thing uh, on the diagram, but I'm going to uh, sort of build build it with you, so it, it's it's more um, understandable. Now the GitHub. So this is where our our central repository, the the central the the uh, the central repository created from the template is located. So this is in the cloud, sort of, right? You know, it's in, it's in the internet. And then uh, now we did a Git clone, which would resulted in uh, our our, our laptop. So we have a laptop and we cloned it. Cloned. So we could say that our rap the laptop is uh, local. Right? This is look of, uh, local. Local. Uh, and then the GitHub is a remote. So we have that cloning process. So when that cloning process happened, if you remember, we just didn't uh, write the word clone. What we did was clone from, um, no, we did some uh, address there. From git at github.com subway and so much. So what will happen is, um, so this is the, the, the internet, right? So you, you should have some connection where, where it came from. So uh, in order to maintain that link, you know, where it came from, we need to have some reference, but this URL is, is too big. So we are going to assign a, sort of like a nickname or an alias for this, we call this, Instead of that long name, we call this origin. So we call from the origin. So whenever it means origin, uh, when we call origin, it is that long URL. So for this, our for our convenience. Um, then, after that, uh, after that cloning process. Uh, you see that there was a master on the on the GitHub, and then he also had. Uh, let's uh, I, I forgot to show you. So while you after you clone it, you this uh, you land on this. So you have the file, and then git 
git branch will show you that you are in the master branch. So you uh, so git actually uh, cloned it, you know, made a copy and checked out branch for yourself. But you don't uh, see uh, more details unless you use a. So control a uh, um, git branch a. This would show you that also the remote branch. So the remote, as you said, you know, this is the this is what was the, on the GitHub. And then you see the origin. So the origin name is not a, uh, it's, it's not a, like, a, um, like unknown anymore. That we know that is a nickname for the uh, URL. So we say it's from the remote, from that URL, instead of having like where you always say, uh, have uh, alias there, and the head and the master. So what has happened is that we have your commit here. Just uh, I'm going to delete these things. You have your C1 there. So the C1 uh, points to your uh, master uh, on your um, um, the GitHub repository. So this points to the master branch. I'll show you in a moment on the GitHub uh, how it was. And then you did a clone and the C1 arrived at your local or your laptop. Now C1 is in your laptop and that uh, reference is also still valid. Master. Um, but we call it uh, because it came from the, um, the, the the remote place. We use it the word origin, origin master, just to make sure that uh, we don't um, we know some reference. In addition to that, we also have the master of local uh, branch. And the head is pointing to that place as well. Right. So now uh, there's a possibility of um, having. Um, maximum of three versions of read Nigma. So as you know, this cloning process uh, took place over internet. Internet. So uh, the last time, so we have, we have one copy that other collaborators might be uh, um, contributing and it might move forward. And you have the origin master on your laptop, the local, the last time you sync with internet. The last time you did the git, uh, git cloned or git pool, uh, we'll talk about a little later. Before you go down to the flight, it's there. So you could have one version here. You could have the one version on your on your uh, uh, reference place or um, the, um, the origin master, and you could have something on your working tree uh, that's um, you're, you're working on. But at this time, all versions are the same. The README, if you if you cat the README everywhere, it will be the same. So that is the that is the um, way it should be. Uh, you have to sync and you have to uh, make sure every, everything is on the same uh, same um, um, state. So um, now, in another three minutes, uh, when you go to the break. Um, Okay, no, I, I think we could have the break now and then I could um, go through the exercise again to clarify it. Yeah, we'll come back, hope you had a break. Um, <clears throat> so this is what, I, what we're going to do now. We're going to open up the breakout rooms um, in a moment. So when that happens, the, the exercise leader or the or, or one designated person do this part, as I showed before, uh, create a use the template to create a repository and then uh, collect all the usernames from the participant and uh, add them and then as the question came 
it's better that the helper or the, the exercise leader stop sharing and a, one of the participants could share the screen. Well, one confident participant uh, that, you know, um, uh, could um, share the screen and then, or, you know, you don't have to be confident. It's, it's okay to, you know, get it wrong. Uh, um, to show the rest of the steps that I, I showed before, go, uh, go to your email and um, uh, click and accept that uh, change. Uh, and also the um, clone it, the one I did uh, right before the break, the cloning step. Uh, and then um, what you should do is follow the follow the steps here. You know, the, the normal git things we did uh, on the first two days, create a file, um, sorry, create a branch and the branch name is better start with your name uh, and create one file. You know, it, I could recommend it because this is going to be in the public internet. So the, in the, in the, in the, open a small text file and write something. You know, it's, it's better if it is like a git command that you know. Write a git command to make it simple. Or if you want to share a recipe, you know, that's okay. Make sure that it's, it's, it will be visible on the public internet what you, uh, what you do. Hit that git uh, and um, make sure that you change to that branch. And then you create the file and do the git add and the git commit. And then git push um, to the remote branch and uh, try to see uh, what happens. So the so the scenario would be the access leader um, uh, create this and uh, maybe uh, another person shares the screen and go through this process. Um, so the the second part of the exercise we'll do it together. So when you reach the uh, step eight, come back to the room. And give us an update on the hack MD. So if you finish quickly, you can uh, come back quickly. Uh, so now the breakout rooms will start at 10:10. 10, 10, uh, sorry, 10 past. And um, we'll meet back again at 10:30 for 20 minutes. And the rest of 20 minutes, we'll do it together. The part of the exercise. Yes. So now at 10:10, 10, 10, when the breakout rooms open, um, go to your breakout rooms. One person creates the central repository, add users, and the others clone it and create a branch and add one more file. Was that uh, clear, um, our colleagues? Or? Yes, I think this is very clear. Yeah. So exercise until 10.30 and then we come back to Twitch um, <clears throat> viewers. Um, what we'll do is I'll give um, mm, five minutes uh, to uh, test it out, but uh, I, I, I can't see a, like a secure way for you to um, sort of contribute, uh, collaborate on this. Uh, but what I'll do is uh, in the repository I created, this one, I will, um, I will uh, add one of our code refinery colleagues uh, and they could, uh, Send me some uh, requests. Right. Mm -hmm. looks, uh, looks promising. All right. Now, yeah. Yes. Sabri has added me as a collaborator, and the GitHub announced me that I have now push access to this centralized workshop exercise repository. Very good. Then I want to push something to into this repository. So first, um, I will clone this for myself. Um, Okay, I will clone it here. Like this. And then Okay.
good. Let's check the exercise description. Okay, this is now done. Then let's create a branch. Of course, that's the first thing to do is to create a branch. And let's check this first. Let's check uh, now that we have the remote connected to it or where we clone it. Let's check how. So here we can see that we have one remote with uh, distinct addresses to fetch and push. The remote is named origin, just a name, usual convention to call it origin. And here is the address uh, where it connects when it wants to communicate with that remote. Good. And then we want to create a branch. Mm. My usual convention is to uh, prefix the branch names with my name and slash. So when my colleagues review uh, my code, uh, they will already see from branch name that it came from me and then the branch name more describes what, what is it about. Uh, so this will be cooking recipe. And then I'll switch to this branch that I just created. Um, I used uh, the git switch command. It's equally well to use git checkout command. They both do exactly the same here. Mm. And please note, it can be sometimes at, at the, in the beginning a little bit confusing because uh, I'm using this slash to distinct my branches and also the git also names the branches with slash to separate the remote name. You can see it with the branch A, which shows um, like this. But here, here it's, my, I use my name to separate that it's my feature that is coming. Here it means that it's from remote. <clears throat> a little bit perhaps confusing, but at least I have used to it. But you can also separate it by using dash. Okay, then I will create a use uh, file. And uh, let's put something into it. Like this. Um, Uh, 
Okay, then we will stage the change with git add. Looking good. Then we will commit it. Like this. Good. Uh, Get status. Okay. And uh, now I have to remember that I just do it until this eight. I won't do nine yet. So next one is to push change as a new branch. Uh, what I want to push is uh, written first. This uh, branch is what I want to push and where to origin. Uh, but it went just a wrong way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I <laughs> misremembered it. So it's uh, the name of the remote is, is the first, and then the name of the branch. What I want to push is the second one. In between, I have this dash u to make it to make my local this local branch to track the remote one in the origin, so that Git from now on will know that this uho slash my recipe branch should track uh, the corresponding track in the remote repository. So if I want to fetch the new changes from the remote repository, it will fetch them from the correct branch. All right. Good, it succeeded. And the next uh, let's browse how it looks like the branches and commits in the GitHub user interface. It notifies that there have been new branch pushed. From the here, from insights, we can see an insight network. We can see now that here's uh, two branches, both belonging to the same repository. The master branch with initial commit, and then the second branch with one commit. Now, if there would be more collaborators and more commits, this would be more interesting to check. Okay, the next thing is submit a pull request. From my branch towards the master or main branch of the corresponding repository. So we, and this is done through the web interface. And here actually on the command line, Git also provides you, this is a, a reply from GitHub that guides us already to this link. It's a GitHub convenience that we will find the same functionality right here in the repository. Uh, in this case, it's here, compare and pull request button. 
Yeah. Sorry, uh, a little um, disruption. Can uh, can can someone send a message to breakout rooms? Um, so they should come back very soon. Okay. I have uh, done that. Okay. Let's uh, wait for some feedback in the hack and see how it's going. Please go ahead, Joe. Thank you. Yeah. Then I will put here some message to clarify maybe uh, my commit, the changes that I've made. This can be quite verbose. It's better to uh, describe thoroughly what have you or, or especially why have you taken some decisions in your changes. So it can be like this. And here you can put different things so that when you review this after a couple of months yourself, you know what was the reasoning behind this particular change. And also that the reviewer uh, could more easily follow what, what, what's your intention with the changes. OK, let's create a pull request then. And now I will click the button. But yeah, there was a, also uh, elements in the previous page that showed that this was actually pull request from my branch towards the master branch. That's a good thing to be sure when you're doing pull requests. Um, so um, I will go through the, 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 the steps again a little bit. Um, what you what you have, uh, would have done. So you'd have uh, cloned the repository from your um, exercise leader, and you would have uh, ended up in a local copy of your centralized repository. Um, and then one thing I forgot to show was uh, the git remote minus v. I guess you had. Uh, uh, Check that out during the um, breakout rooms. Uh, so this is the origin that I said the alias or the nickname for this long um, URL. Um, so you can conveniently use it. Um, then uh, you now created a branch and then change the checkout or switch to that branch and add the file, uh, uh, created a file with some recipe or some uh, details and then git commit. So when that git commit uh, is performed, you will see uh, that your master branch was pointed to uh, the C1 commit and that from, from that master branch, you checked out uh, your feature branch, you know, the, the one you created. And that would have had the, the second commit you did, the file you created, and the head would have moved to that place. So your master is in one stage, which is same as the remote master, but your, your branch has moved. Uh, in that, um, yes. Then uh, you'd have uh, done a git push. So this git push is um, is to send your your changes, uh, the suggestion will change or uh, or you um, uh, the thing you um, included in your branch. So this will not end up in in your in the main branch yet. So it's it's going to your branch. So so you are you are specifying git push the origin the short name for the for the big URL and a dash u so so that branch will be tracked. Uh, when it lands on the remote branch, so you don't uh, you so the so Git knows that when you say you are um, 
uh, your local name, it, it will always refer uh, push or pull from that sp specific name on the remote branch. So this is some so this dash help help get to track uh, which branch is uh, uh, which 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 on, on remote and local. <clears throat> Um, so when that um, <clears throat> happens, so you could uh, go to uh, the, the the central repository, the web page, and if I go to settings, and if I go to um, yeah, the visuals, um, let me find my classes. Yeah, the br branches, of course, uh, the one is uh, that I've created, but I was looking for the visual moderate page secret environment. Um, where the, oh yes. So it's not on the settings. So it's on the insights. So if you go to insights, and if you click on the networks, you will see that one of our colleagues, they have, uh, he has, uh, Done a commit, which has moved a little bit forward from the master branch itself. Then, uh, what you would have done is um, create a pull request. So the pull request would have been um, arrived like this on the central place. So this is where we are. Um, at this point, you should know that your master branch on the remote is. Uh, behind your feature branch. So our attempt is to incorporate all the changes in the feature branch, the one you just sent, to the master branch. So we, so, uh, we could think of it as like uh, incorporating the changes to the main uh, development pipeline. Uh, when this arrives, so now what we do is, <clears throat> I'm going to review this. Um, so when reviewing this, one thing that would have been, you know, uh, which is also mentioned in the advanced part was, so you who has sent this uh, um, pull request uh, without uh, sort of uh, explicitly discussing it. So this is, this is very clear, you know, what he wanted to contribute. But the recommended way would be that he would have gone here and created an issue, uh, new, Suggestions, for example, uh, discuss you know, something like this and created an issue and get a issue number and then refer to his pull request. Uh, yeah. Uh, into, into, with uh, issue, uh, something like this, and then uh, it, it would um, it would know that it is uh, linked. So in the in the in the documented place, you you will also find some uh, keywords like closest issue two. And uh, you know keywords that you could actually when the uh, when the commit when the pull request is sent is uh, is accepted, this issue would be solved. So uh, in this pull request, um, uh, um, socially um, recommendable way would have been uh, to have an issue, and then uh, because of the the time constraints, we didn't uh, enforce that much. Here yeah, you are send it, and I see that what has been done, and I see a commit. Yes, one commit, and this is the uh, commit that he has sent. I could click that hash, and I see the details. Okay, so here's I will write my favorite recipe, which is a blank, of course. Right? He has not sent the real recipe; that's a secret still. Probably in the next uh, uh, push, he will send that. Then I could see which files are changed. You see, everything is okay. I could have start a conversation. You know, I could refer to uh, certain parts of uh, what has happened. For example, I could say, "Can you? Where is the? Oh, 
in, in a very polite and diplomatic way also. Can you please send me the actual address? Right. Something like that. You could come to that. And then you start the review process. Um, then um, um, I could finish my review. So this is review is not something that uh, that an expert should do. Uh, in, a, in, a, in, an, uh, in an ideal world, for example, in a research group, the, the students could review actually the, the professors um, push us even, uh, the commit, commits to learn uh, things. So I will go up to this. And then I have the other pull request. Sorry, pull request. And now the our, our exercise leaders they could also review this um, uh, uh, pull request and you know do, uh, add some comments. And then they could click merge pull request. Uh, So when that happens, if I can find again the visual um, page, if I go here, I go here, insights, networks, I would see that this uh, amazing thing that has happened. Master has got this change and uh, uh, got this change to a commit, uh, merge commit, we call it. Um, that is explained here, yeah, the M1 here. Yeah. So master has also that change. So that change, if I go to now um, my branch, uh, I should have actually shown you the, uh, you, you know, pointed you out that this recipe was not there in master before. It would have been only on the branch, uh, US branch. Uh, uh, but, but now it's on the master branch as well. Now we could also safely delete that branch as well. Okay, so that's all. So please, um, the, um, the exercise leaders, review your changes and close, uh, uh, accept uh, your changes. And then uh, we have a slight uh, discussion. Yeah, so these are optional things. You could uh, go, go through them later. So it's just about that issue that I, I would to show you. So why we created a branch? So let's say if, if everybody pushed to the master branch in the center of the repository, that would create conflicts. So that's why the feature branch is important. So there's a chance for the review. Yes. So this uh, pull request you could do as, as you did on the web page. And also Richard, um, one of our colleagues has created this terminal. Uh, no, link for that one. Some, uh, I think this one. The Richard and uh, Radon are working on a, you could do this on a, on a terminal itself. So if you have a lot of uh, pull requests to handle, uh, something very nice, you should check it out uh, when you have time. Um, yes, so that's all I want to say. Uh, Diana or you or Radon uh, or any of our colleagues, is there anything that I should address? Anything I missed on the HackMD? So there are many good, que uh, good questions coming on the HackMD. Uh, yeah. All of them have been answered actually, but uh, if, uh, if uh, one of you would like to point something out in particular. So because of the instructor bias, would anybody else would like to contribute something that I missed, but it's very useful in a real life work scenario. Uh, you are here. Yes, <clears throat> Maybe uh, one question that was already answered in HackMD, but we could raise here is a question about push versus pull request. Mm. By pushing changes, uh, GitHub doesn't automatically create a pull request uh, and why. And this, um, this is a 
how GitHub GitHub uh, behaves. It's a it's a uh, planned planned to work like this. That when you push your branch to to GitHub, the remote remote repository, uh, it's more preferable that it doesn't automatically create a pull request. Uh, we will see this later today in in a second exercise, a second part. Uh, because it might be that your push of the branch is somehow incomplete and you realize that after pushing it, and often it's actually good to push incomplete feature branches so that the others can review them already uh, in the middle of working and comment and give a suggestions how to proceed with the actual coding work. So the branches that you push to uh, GitHub or any other remote repositories, they also work as a basis for discussion. And then one more thing is that they are also backed up like this. If you only have your feature branches where you have lots of code and lots of sweat and tears uh, drawn into, if you already have them in your local computer and it like breaks, it's a bad thing. So it's a good habit at the end of the day, for example, to push your feature branches to remote repository. So they are backed up like this. Thank you. So they're, they're very, very important uh, points um, um, that I missed actually. So uh, one, one last thing, I, I, uh, I pushed something to my branch now uh, and it appears here on the title. So one thing, like if you're not finished with it, you could actually create something called a draft pull request. So this is um, should do for example, right? Um, this will prevent uh, like uh, this being uh, incorporated before it's finished. And after sending this, let's see uh, if you have a central workflow. Uh, so I go to my branch, uh, sub this big commands, and you see this file. It's uh, some just test. While the review is going on, um, what are the files here? Oops. You could keep on um, better practice. I'm going to uh, send another, another change. I forgot to track it. So when, when I send more things, the, the push, the, the, the pull request, it would remain. But everything you send would add, add to that. So if you see that more changes, you could collect things. So when you are ready to uh, review, you can click ready to review. So that's sort of like a you know in real life case scenario that you might uh, experience. Okay, so that's all uh, in my part. If there's no uh, details from our colleagues, um, so there's our break schedule. Um, yeah, ten fifteen. So yeah, so you hope. Shall we um, take the break now and uh, go for the next one? So the, actually the, the break was um, um, yeah. So now it's, it's, it's next, it's you. So you could, uh, you could decide how to proceed. Yes, uh, we, we will start now hmm. and go the brief intro, take a break after that instructions for the exercise, actual exercise in breakout rooms and continue like that. So, yes. Please take my uh, screen and thank you everybody uh, for your attention and all the instructors for uh, helping me out with this. All right, just a moment, I'll take your screen. Good.
All right. So we will continue on the third lesson of the day, distributed version control and forking workflow. And uh, what Sabri just uh, teached us was uh, the first workflow that you may resort when collaborating with colleagues. But what if you have to, you have some uh, script that started as a like a experiment uh, or or hobby project and it, it's suddenly became uh, quite successful and uh, you you start to uh, collect connect uh, requests from from around the world about your script that hey could you include this and this feature into your script and you want to collaborate with any person who shows interest into your work. And for that, we will use this distributed uh, version control with forking workflow. The previous centralized workflow also used distributed version control because we already used remotes. So the Repositories are distributed to separate physical locations. But the main idea here is, is to fork this forking workflow. And here is an illustration. Just a moment, I will um, take into use this highlighting tool so that uh, I just don't move my mouse cursor randomly here. So also in this workflow, we have a central repository. It's, it's the same central repository as previously. Uh, there nothing has changed. And uh, For, for to be able to trust to your collaborators or, or if you are not completely trusting them at the beginning at least, you don't allow uh, unknown people uh, any push, pushing rights to the central repository in this model. So only you uh, or the people you know have uh, rights to this central repository. And when coll a collaborator wants to uh, contribute to your code, uh, they will they will fork this central repository, make a main cop, uh, make a full copy of it uh, into their own uh, service account in GitHub, for example. And then they clone this fork to their local computer. And on local computer, the changes are made, committed, and push it to this fork. And then in GitHub user interface, after pushing some feature branch into this fork, you will create a pull request from this fork towards the central repository. And then, for example, you as owner of central repository, review the pull request and the code in it maybe suggest some changes. And then finally, if it's good, approve it to, to your code base.
And uh, from the this collaborator's point of view, they they have now two remote repositories to work with, while previously it was only one. This original one, which we will call upstream in this context, and then the forked one, which will uh, be usually called the origin. So the fork, your own, is origin. That is the main repository that you push and pull with, communicate when doing changes. And then the upstream is to you get changes when they have been accepted, merged to code base. And real life examples are plenty. Here's two of them. And uh, working with multiple repositories goes with git remote command. But we will get into this uh, with this exercise. And to see all remotes, we can use remote dash dash verbose command. All right. That's, that's the like a uh, layout that we build on, on this ex next exercise. And I would say that now we take a 10 minute break. And after the break, I will go through the exercise instructions here and we then go into breakout rooms and do the exercise. Sounds great. Uh, you, I will open the breakout rooms for those of you that would like to socialize, but uh, just remember to take a break as well. And then uh, I will close them again for the, the introduction. Okay. Welcome uh, back everyone. Um, yes, uh, Diana, you had something to remark here. Yes, I just want to say that uh, it's so nice that uh, most of you answered the icebreaker questions and we are going to uh, get uh, back to you and uh, comment on this. So please uh, stay tuned. Exactly. Excellent. Okay. Yes, so <clears throat> here's the layout and now we will try this, uh, practice this in breakout rooms. So remember, we will work in a new repository again. So you have to CD out from uh, any repositories that you might be in currently. And uh, then, mm -hmm. Sorry, Juho, it seems oh, okay. that actually not everyone is back. Yeah, now I see it. Just the wait, breakout room. Uh, no problem. My confusion. Yeah, it was a good rehearsal for me. I'll try to do that beginning better. Yeah, we will soon have a take two. Yes. <laughs> Cut. Okay, room's closing in uh, 10 seconds. Yes. All right, are we back, everyone? We are all back. Okay, 
So, welcome back, everyone. And now we will practice this forking layout, forking workflow uh, in an exercise in breakout rooms. And the uh, thing to remember, we will work with a new repository again. So if you currently are in some repository, you have to CD out on your command line from any existing repositories. And uh, in this exercise, there are steps from A to G altogether. We will do steps A to E in breakout rooms for 15 to 20 minutes. And after that, we come back to this main room and do step F together. And if time allows, then you get to do the last step, the G step in uh, breakout rooms. Let's see how it goes. Or then we do the last step also in, in the main room. Um, and now uh, helpers or exercise leaders, if you haven't yet created, uh, generated uh, this exercise repository, you still uh, have time to do it or you don't have to do it now. You can just listen uh, these instructions and do it uh, after instructions and it shouldn't take long to generate the exercise repository. Uh, but here is the template which should be uh, the exercise repositories should be generated and generated by pushing this use this template button. This time do not add collaborators to this generated repository. So we don't add any collaborators now. So less to do for exercise leaders in this sense. Uh, exercise leaders should share the link of this newly created repository uh, in HackMD for their group. And learners, participants in breakout rooms, fork this newly created repository and then clone the fork. That, uh, here are the illustrations that describe how, how it should look like. Mm. I will go through this exercise in the main room for our stream viewers and uh, followers in the stream. You will do this exercise with me forking the repository linked here. And uh, maybe some of our uh, instructor colleagues can also participate this main room exercise so that we get some action there. All right. Here are the steps that describe what is done. Uh, yeah, this first one, fork and clone. Uh, forking the repository. I will show that now how it's done. If I would like to fork this repository, like our stream viewers should soon fork, I will click here, upper right corner, gray button called fork. Let's try what it does. Okay, then it asks uh, to into what organization. I will 
would do it uh, for my own account here, not any organizational account. And that's the usual, or it might be to some organization also. But And okay, it was quite fast. Uh, now we see that it's forked. It's under my account. It got some name. I apparently had this already forked, so it incremented with a two or suffixed with two. And here it shows that it's actually forked from original repository. After this, now for all the learners, the next step is to clone here uh, as we have done before. So make sure to clone your own fork so that your GitHub username is shown here. Okay, that's the first step. The second step is open an issue. And we will open it on a central repository. So in this example case, I would open it here, the repository that I forked from. And here is the issue uh, tab and a new issue green button in the right side of the page. And then after creating an issue, you get the actual work of coding. You have now cloned your own fork to your local computer. And then we should go through the basic drill, creating a new branch for feature, changing into that switching into that branch. That's uh, easy to forget. And many times I have actually done the changes in the main branch instead of feature branch, although I created the feature branch. Changes in feature branch, committing them. Here are the more details into that. Then push your changes to the fork. Uh, nothing to worry about remotes at this point. When you cloned your own fork, you don't have to remember that later we will work also with upstream. At this point, it's only your own fork. It's called origin in this point. That's the common custom. Uh, and then after we have pushed or changed, we file a pull request. So um, back in our own fork, uh, our own feature branch should be shown here. And the notification probably shows also up here. And there you can compare the changes and create a pull request. And that's the last step that you will do in the breakout rooms when you reach the step A and have uh, filed a pull request, you can indicate in HackMD that you are ready. Um, in the step F, which we will do in the main room, we will discuss and accept the pull requests. Mm, and then we see if we do this updating the fork in main room or in the breakout rooms. Let's check the optional points here. There was two optional points. Yeah, I have something. All right, so 
if you are if you reach the step e quite early if you're quick you can uh, try to create a new pull request by repeating the some steps between a and e so you can try to do this if you are quick if you are even quicker you can also try this second optional point so adding commits to uh, pushed branch pushed feature branch like sabri uh, briefly showed in his portion before all right uh, is there any questions in HackMD that I should address here or? Uh, no, it's uh, all good. Uh, most of uh, the exercise leaders have uh, created the forks. My question is how much time are we going to have in the breakout rooms? Let's have a 20 minutes. Okay, great. Then I will open them. Okay. So That's I'll right. be sending a pull request very soon. Okay, good. Maybe Sabri, would it be okay if you would take the screen and do the steps A through E with some uh, narrative while you are doing it or, or are you already into? Um, no, uh, I could do that. So we could, uh, we could sort of have a discussion. So you could also Good. keep your mic on. <clears throat> yes, okay. Okay. You can take my screen and, and start going through the exercise. Yes. Um, so what I want to do is not this one. Um, <clears throat> I created a fork as uh, you showed from the repository that the, um, uh, our Twitch viewers are going to use. Let me check whether that link is clearly stated somewhere. Yes, uh, so learners following their stream. So this, this is the one I'm going to send the pull request to. Um, I made a fork. I, I clicked, clicked on it and made a fork as you did. Uh, and I copied the link. And I did a git clone. At this, I did this. Which I, um, which um, uh, resulted in having my this directory with git remote pointing to my fork. So not the fork that you um, showed initially that I do not have right access. So this is my fork. Uh, then I created, a, did I create a branch? No, I have not created a branch. So let's create a branch. Let's name it according to our um, um, instructions. So we're not confused. Um, so what they say is, before we do any uh, modification, we create a new branch and switch to it. It is good reflex and good practice choose branch name, which is descriptive of content. Uh, okay. So I'm going to say git checkout minus b sub b uh, git. Um, so you, so I, 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 I'm going to do this um, single command without doing great git um, branch and then do a git checkout or a switch uh, for the second time. The reason is I always forget to switch some, you know, when I create a branch, when, especially when I'm doing things live. So I, I make sure that I'm, I'm on the correct branch and you should see the star, the head is on the correct place. So now I'm on the correct place. Um, here I'm going to, uh, okay, it's actually recipe, so, uh, but I created a git 
um, help. Um, that's okay. I'm uh, Git recipe. No, it's all the same. You could cook Git. Um, I'm going to add um, the command git uh, to find out the file name in uh, uh, cooking recipe repo. I use the git command. Um, <clears throat> git um, diff name. Okay, let's make it a little sensible. Uh, to find out which files has been changed in my cooking recipe, recipe, uh, recipe repo <coughs> is the command. Um, so I'm going to um, Command that, git status, git doesn't track it, git add, git recipe, it is staged, um, status, right, it's staged. Uh, oh, oh yes, I forgot something to add, I reset it, I take it back from the staging stage, I will add. Uh, something more because I forgot to add. Okay, thank you. Then I add it again. Git add git commit subrace uh, recipe repo um, help. Then I want to uh, send this to the send to my folder or my um, my fork. Git remote minus v. I see that I call origin. I have this nickname or alias or a shortcut to this repo. So I'm going to say git. Uh, I forgot the branch name, so I'm going to find my branch name. Git push. Okay, let's do a git status first. Git status. Git push push origin origin so I don't have to type the URL minus u. So okay, as we add it, why don't you why don't you do this so origin type this one? What do you think you would that work? Push. No, it did work, so I could I could give the long name as well, but it's more convenient instead of this if I type origin. Right. The same thing. Let's push it again and see what, ha what happens. It's up to date. Git is uh, very good at tracking these things. So when that happened, on my uh, fork, I see this um, new commit, and it gives me the option to uh, uh, compare pull request. So the last time uh, during my exercise, oh, I forgot to uh, mention just in case if you miss this message, you could also go to uh, branches. Uh, where are my branches? Security project section. So why why can't I, I go to the full screen a little bit to see where my branches are? Yes. Um, right right after the commit message, I could click on the uh, mask uh, branch and then I could um, send a pull request as well. So I'm going to send a pull request. And when sending a pull request, another thing I forgot was you have to make sure from where to where. So because of this uh, screen real estate, you can see the, the full path here. 
So this says that from my repository, my fork, this branch, a pull request in this arrow is sent to the master branch of the main repository. This is my change. Uh, please review. And after creating the pull request, I remember that I forgot to uh, discuss this. So I'm going to open an issue. Yes, that was, I also was going to uh, remind yes. you. Yes, Very good. Um, mm, uh, repo. Um, to help people using the um, <clears throat> so as uh, as we add it my pull request is here uh, this says this will not be merged until it's uh, reviewed so the review required so only thing I, I did was this commit. So I'm going to send another commit on top of it, like uh, on the same branch. Text. And this one, I'm going to do a git add. And in the commit message, I'm going to say, Closes, which refer to that issue. So this is sort of like a, uh, a keyword. So um, uh, if you could show uh, that uh, page later on when you load, I think in the material we have this uh, uh, cheat sheet somewhere, or maybe one of our colleagues. Uh, so your closes, fixes, there are some keywords. Can I do the push uh, to origin? Hit command, oops. Tell to push your reference. Oh, so let's see what that is. So I get an error. Let's check. Get status. Get remote minus V. It might be a new thing. Let's see. Git push origin, uh, what was my branch name, git branch, this name, okay. So it was the branch name. Okay, did I uh, type it wrongly? Yes, so the branch name was wrong, so. I checked the branch name and it's okay. So when you do that, another <clears throat> commit has arrived here with that um, issue link I said. Now I think you, you could uh, take the screen and do the review and do the necessary things. Right. I will take the screen and we will wait for a couple of minutes to breakout rooms be ready. And then we will do this in a together in the main room. Thank you. Thank you, Sabri. Uh, welcome you all. It's OK. Uh, you can do it as soon until the end. Uh, now let's do the next step, F, together here, and then uh, we'll do this uh, update, step G, update your fork. Uh, you can do it in your breakout rooms. And uh, looking at the schedule, I guess we could make it so that uh, you get to do this step G in breakout rooms and would it be a good idea if we uh, add, add it with the five minute break and then 
after that we return to go through this last contributing someone else project part. Okay, well, let's see uh, how we proceed and what the time is when we reach there. But the next step, and I will now show this step F. So after the collaborator has filed a pull request, what, what we do. So here we see this uh, uh, central repository. We are now here in central repository. And from here, the forks and the number next to forks button, we can see uh, different people who have forked this. Now Sabri forked this and uh, did some work in his feature branch. And before it, uh, he filed an issue here uh, that has some explanation about cooking recipe. And uh, we see here also that uh, Sabri has added a commit uh, in his own fork that references this issue. This is how GitHub shows it. We go to look at the pull request, actual pull request. We see two pull requests here. The first one is from Sabri. Let's check that, check that first. And now uh, some collaborator wants to commit, uh, contribute the code to the repository and what, what to look. First thing to look is um, who is the contributor and uh, maybe if it's totally unknown person, does it look uh, like uh, plausible that it's a real human being and maybe not just, just uh, some uh, spam bot or something like that. Mm. Then I usually check the actual changes. And if there's a quite lots of uh, changes in the code, it might be especially if you are using this with uh, with people in your research group, for example, it might be a good idea to actually do this uh, together so that you, the contributor, the author of the changes explains you and guides you through the code and you get to discuss like with audio, with voice and, and ask questions while he or she explains it. But if we are doing it asynchronously, uh, just I'll try to check the changes and then we can leave comments here, for example. If we don't understand something. And uh, and ask some clarification for the for the actual code. And uh, now this is quite simple update. So there's uh, not much into the actual reviewing the code. But uh, yeah, this should be regarded more like a discussion, this code review. Uh, even though we are doing it through this GitHub user, web user interface, uh, you can leave comments here and then the author of the changes should uh, respond to comments and, and you can leave uh, uh, 
can leave out uh, requests for changes. Please do this a little bit differently. Uh, and something like this. So when, when pull request is made, it doesn't mean that it should be accepted right away. But instead, it can be a basis for a discussion about the features that are created. And when you are satisfied, when the author has uh, perhaps pushed more comments for, for changes that you request to this pull request, and you are uh, happy with the result, uh, then you can uh, finish the uh, code review. Some of these buttons and, and comments that I create here are not strictly necessary, um, but it's good to check the actual code. And after that, Mm. We can we can start merging the commits to to our code base. There's some uh, notifications about checks that have been failed for this repository. Uh, let's check what that was about. Yes. Um, I forgot to mention this in the instruction in the exercise, but there's a file called test.py, uh, which includes some tests to check if the recipe contains the string taco in it. And we will uh, look this more into detail in next week when discussing about automated testing and Let's not go into details in, in here, but uh, from the changes, we see that there's no word taco in these lines. And so the automation is working as it should work. It didn't find the keyword there. And so it, the test failed. And uh, here's a notification for it. But uh, you will learn more about this next week with automated testing. So we will accept that these are not. Uh, OK, now it actually <laughs> collaborator here was fast as we, as I was speaking. Sabri added a comment here. Uh, and now the, there's this requirement for tests to be uh, succeed good and then we can merge the pull request like this and now if we go and check the uh, the topography of this repository in the insights tab with the network uh, face we see that there's uh, three commits from Sabri merged to master branch here. And that now the exercise leaders can start uh, reviewing and uh, merging their groups commits to the central repository. Uh, uh, what happened to that issue that I created? Uh, is it still there? Yeah, good point. Thanks, Sabri. So let's check. Now, uh, Sabri had this uh, uh, keyword closes in his uh, pull rip pull request and we see that uh, the issue has automatically closed by GitHub. So it's here in the closed closed issues. Thanks to remind that. 
And here is also another pull request. I will check it soon. But first, uh, let's continue with the steps here. So XSS leaders can now review the pull request and, and start merging the changes. You don't have to um, you don't have to discuss them uh, at this point very much. Uh, just check them and merge them, and we so we can uh, proceed on the step G. In this step step G, uh, when all, all the contributions changes have been merged uh, to the central repository. Uh, we have to still update our own fork. Now, the pull request. So with this layout, you pushed the changes, you created a pull request. The pull request got approved in central repository. And now central repository master branch is updated. But master branch on your local computer and in your fork is still not updated. GitHub won't update them automatically, but this have to be done manually. And we do this first in the old way and just recently, GitHub has introduced a change that allows uh, updating here just between central repository and fork. But let's just check the more manual way to do how to get the master branch here in our local computer and here in the fork updated from central repository. And in the step uh, G, you will do uh, this. So uh, we will pull from central repository to our local computer, the master branch uh, uh, updates in the master branch. And then we will push the updates to the master branch from our local computer to our own fork. So it's a bit of detour because these are actually in the same service. Um, but uh, it might be useful in some situations. So there's uh, two optional ways to do this manually. The one is to add the remote and we usually name it upstream that points to this central repository. So this is called upstream. Let's Let's do it right now. Mm, actually, I haven't uh, forked this because it was Sabri. So, uh, Lua, I, I can I can uh, update the fork if you want. Do you want me to do it or? Uh, yeah, I was just wondering if it suffices to uh, with these instructions that the groups could do it by themselves in the breakout rooms. Okay. Mm. Well, it's better if you take the screen and, and do it with this longer route style here. So please, Sabri, just to make sure that everyone else uh, follows the steps. Yes, and while uh, Sabri is uh, preparing this, then uh, Radovan can show how you can do it with the new uh, feature that GitHub has. But first we'll take the old route, which is longer. Yes, let's okay. first. So here's the recipe, uh, the, the repository. So I have the master branch here. On the master branch, you will see that my file uh, here. So if I go to my fork, uh, let's go to my fork. I see that file is not here, but but it's there in the, um, the my my branch that I send the pull request from but it's not in the master. Uh, let's check the, 
um, a terminal git status git branch. I'm going to check out, or you could just uh, switch master ls cat. Uh, what was that file? Yeah, so that file is not there on, on branch side. So, what I'm going to do is uh, add git add uh, rem remote add remote what was the word we the repo name use upstream was it uh, um, yes upstream yeah we could call it whatever we want um, then I'm going to add this one from the, the branch I forked it from. Uh, before I do that, I'll show the git remote. See, I have one remote. I'm going to do a git remote add uh, up, upstream. This one. So if I see the git remote, we have two uh, git remotes. One is the one I have a right access to. Oh, sorry, this one. one. One that I don't have a right access to, only read access. So I'm going to git pull. I'm going to take all the changes, not from my place, but from the upstream master. All right, so I got the recipe file here. You can see if I do the ls, I have the recipe file. Then I'm going to push it back to origin master. In the diagram that uh, you explained very well, I take it to my local computer and send it to my remote, uh, my, my fork. So if I go here now, uh, my fork, I see that file in my master branch and also in my uh, this is branch. Uh, so without, uh, so that is that is the that is the workflow by use the terminal. So now I'm going to hand over to Radovan uh, to show a more cooler way to do this. Please take my screen, Radovan. Roger that. Working on it. So I'm asking to stop somebody sharing screen. Yes, I guess it will then stop the share. So I hope that yes. everybody else has their video turned off. Okay, now share stopped, maybe not. And now I have this screen. Looking good. And, and I know that this is not super great, but I will zoom in. So I also have the fork, but my fork is behind. I'm here in my namespace, I forked. I forked and I didn't do any work. But I would like to get these nice updates. So I can see here that my master branch is four commits behind. And I could now update it the way uh, Yuho and Sabri explained. But now I, I wanted to show you that since last week, this is very new, the GitHub has this feature here. So I can do that through the user interface. I can say fetch and merge. And it will, it will fetch these four commits that I don't have and it will automatically update my master branch. Let's try. And now I'm, I'm even. So this branch is even with master. So that's even a short way. But we don't have it in the material because it's very, very, very new. But nice to know that this feature also exists. We still think that it's pedagogically good if we show what, what is happening under the hood. That's why we also go the bit more pedestrian way. All right. Ready Thank to you. Uh, All right. Basic comments looks good. Uh, 
there was some uh, conflict. Let's just comment, comment this. The actual change. Uh, yeah, and then there's a workflow waiting approval. Yes, this is a. Hmm. Well, I guess we go through this next week in uh, testing lesson. What does this mean? Uh, but maybe I can also uh, clarify it here in the stream and the recording that this um, automated testing uh, machinery in the GitHub doesn't work when someone without uh, push access, so write access to this repository file as a pull request. And this is uh, GitHub's response to uh, pull requests that contain, uh, to my understanding, uh, code that uh, initiates some crypto mining when the tests on the code are, are run. That's my limited understanding of this issue, but uh, we can see here in the files that this uh, probably won't um, launch any mining in this GitHub testing automation. So we approve the tests for this. And uh, then we also see that there is some conflicts. The tests will fail, I guess, all of them, because the commit didn't include the keyword taco, but it doesn't matter now. Uh, and then there's also conflicting files. So, um, that's a more interesting. Uh, maybe it has something to do with uh, Sabris pull request, which is uh, yes. So Sabri has changed the same file. This Git recipe dot md and also this newer pull request tries to change this same file so in the instructions um, we uh, we suggest that the, the name would have to be first create a new file and then name it individually uh, and we hope that they are different but conflicts are always interesting or uh, at least when practicing things in real life maybe not so much so but uh, yeah so we have here a, a conflict and we can try to solve it here and now, because this is mostly plain text file, that uh, uh, is read by humans. Uh, so I, I will solve this conflict like this. And now we are one minute. Diana, could you send a one minute? Closing message to breakout room. Thanks. And when resolving conflict, conflicts uh, manually, like I will do here, we have to remember to uh, remove this, remove these uh, tags that Git 
as here in the file. So now it's a, uh, I have res uh, resolved conflict like this. This is my take on how to resolve this. Let's mark it as resolved. And looks good. And now, um, It's uh, just committing the conf conflict uh, merge uh, or the commit uh, merge mm, committing the conflict resolving merge. So let's do that. <clears throat> and let's see what's the next step. Okay, so we are still. Yes. Everyone is uh, back from the okay. breakout rooms now. All right, I will still uh, finish this. So <clears throat> we have and this. For those, uh, sorry, for those that just joined, uh, so Yoho has just been explaining these steps for those which are streaming. Yes. <clears throat> so if you are, there was some conflicting merges. So if you are interested in that, you can check the recording afterwards. But uh, for now, uh, I will add my approving review after re resolving the conflicts here and approve. So there were conflict was about Sabri had uh, modified the same file as, as the second contributor, but now it's sorted. All right. So welcome back everyone. I hope you manage to update your fork in, in the breakout rooms. If you have had some uh, issues, uh, unfinished issues with uh, this exercise, you're very welcome to stay after the after we end for the day. But uh, now the next step, uh, and we can help open the breakout rooms and help you to do the step that you uh, maybe didn't have time to do. So no worries with that. But now we are at, at the final step and uh, we should have a, have a same situation in the central repository, our own fork and in our lo local, local computer. And uh, as the uh, closing lines for this exercise, there's this, uh, popular culture uh, story about young Skywalker uh, who here states that uh, he almost felt something. I can uh, associate with that. And uh, old gentleman responds, that's good. You've taken, uh, yeah, the young Skywalker says, I could almost see the remote. That was the punchline here. So almost missed the punchline. Well, you have taken your first step into a larger world. Uh, I'm not very good at jokes often. All right. And key points uh, are about the remotes that we have, can have a multiple them of them and we can label them as we like. Uh, we have still seven minutes and I'd like to quickly uh, briefly, uh, correction, briefly mention uh, important aspects when contributing to someone others uh, uh, repository or project. And after that, we will briefly summarize and have some uh, notifications for the next week. So, when contributing to someone other's project, minor changes uh, go with this uh, similar workflow that we just uh, practiced uh, in, in this exercise. We fork, we still should fork if it's an, uh, like a 
project that we are not integrally part of. We create a branch like we did, commit and push change and file a pull request uh, for very minor changes, kind of typos uh, in uh, code comments or typos in, in documentation or similar kind of. Uh, but when uh, you have observed something um, more uh, important that it's not it's not solved just by fixing a typo. You should open an issue uh, in the repository as we as we did in this exercise. I describe the problem there, and uh, also describe your uh, proposed uh, fix, your suggested fix for this for this issue, and then preferably discuss and get some feedback from the owners of the project. And it's important to indicate if you are if you are working on the issue so that others know that someone is actually working on it to avoid duplicating uh, efforts. And then when you submit your fix as a pull request reference, uh, with these uh, keywords to which automatically close the issue. Um, if you have an idea for a new feature in uh, someone else's project, the drill is pretty much similar. Uh, the key point here is also to motivate why, uh, like what do you want the new feature to be, why it should be added, and how it could be perhaps uh, implemented. And again, discuss and get feedback before you start coding. If you have already started coding, or you have are starting, indicate it to others also. Uh, it's it's better to first communicate and and get feedback before writing a uh, great amount of code and, and then get the response uh, from the project owners that actually this is not quite what we anticipated, that uh, we can't accept these contributions to our code base. And then you would have been doing a work for nothing that has, couldn't be merged there. So it's uh, essential to get the common understanding of the issue and, and uh, the solution. So in general, in the coding, there's uh, never uh, too much communication about the issues. Uh, then there's this working in progress uh, feature. Uh, so the different uh, web-based uh, code repositories like GitHub has these kind of keywords or uh, functionalities in their user interface that prevents uh, the pull request being merged into the um, main code base. They are to indicate that it's uh, unfinished work and it should be discussed and get feed more feedback. Uh, like uh, Sabri quickly showed, there's this draft pull requests in GitHub, for example. Uh, but uh, same functionality can be, at least in some services, uh, achieved by prefixing uh, pull request title with this WIP uh, prefix. Uh, about licenses, we are discussing more next week, so we won't go into this, but uh, it's an important aspect of, of contributing also. And then to avoid merging malicious code, uh, here are some points to take and, and check them. All right, this was everything that I wanted to raise up from when contributing to someone else's code. I guess we are now done for today. And if, is there some comments that I should address in the HackMD?
Yeah, thanks, uh, Yoho. Uh, so your questions have been uh, rolling. Uh, let's see if I can bring something up in particular. Uh, let's do so that, uh, let's take the uh, announcement for the next week, how to prepare for the next week uh, first. And then if there's more questions, we can uh, leave this uh, or those interested can stay here. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Yes, let's do that. So, yes, it's very important uh, uh, for next week that you finish setting up your uh, code refinery environment if you have not done that already. And we have the link uh, to that at the very bottom of the hack and be. And we are also yeah, going so to this... send you a reminder via email today in case you missed the link. But that's very important to, to have ready before.